You're no. talking about the Earth I being this, flat. Thousands I'm, I'm of scientists have looked thing. into it. You think they're all wrong? That's so insane. You haven't looked into it. I So you spin, you know, when you spin pizza dough, it kind of flattens out. It gets wider in the middle. And so Earth, throughout its life, even when it formed, it was spinning. And it got a little wider at the equator than it does at the poles. So it's not actually a sphere. So it's not actually a sphere. It's not actually a sphere. All I'm saying is when I look at all of it, when I look at the photographic evidence, or I look at the fact that we haven't been back since 1972, when I look at the fact that no humans except the Apollo astronauts have ever gone through the Van Allen radiation belt, the fact that no one's even done a flyby around the moon since then, it seems weird to me. When I look at the press conference and I see Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong and uh, Michael Collins nervous and weird and obviously, like, being deceptive after they came back. You can see on the back of his shirt a couple of upticks on either side where you would expect wires to come in on either side of that harness. They're often portraying that this is live. Of course, these things are fully choreographed and edited in advance to make sure that there's nothing too obvious. Look CGI to me. That gives away that this is a suspension in front of a blue screen hoax. The moon landing stopped in 1972 and we haven't been back. We haven't been beyond the Van Allen belts. We must solve these challenges before we send people through this region of space, through the waves of radiation. So, uh, so, so you spin, you know, when you spin pizza dough, it kind of flattens out. It gets wider in the middle and so Earth, throughout its life, even when it formed, it was spinning and it got a little wider at the equator than it does at the poles. So it's not actually a sphere. It's an it's oblate, and officially it's an oblate spheroid. That's what we call it. But not only that, it's slightly wider below the equator than above the equator. A little chubbier. A little chubbier. Yeah. Chubby's a good way. It's like pear-shaped. But what? No, so, I could be wrong. It could be real. There's too many things. It could you be don't real, but in. they've been faking them so much they look like that's all those the, other fake ones. You've probably seen images like these from NASA. Grand and beautiful scenes of the cosmos and worlds beyond our own. I've always wondered who makes these and how do they do it? This is Robert Kurt and Tim Pyle, two multimedia artists at the iPad Caltech. Yes. Not they look enough. like I've seen so many fake ones that NASA admits that they're CGI composites. There's so many out there. So when you see this one, it's like this is the same one. Yes, there's so much fraud when you look into Astronomy it. Like, I don't doesn't come shit. From look into it. They take scientific discoveries that look something like this and turn them into something like this. The faking of spacewalks in a swimming pool. In this vid, you catch a glimpse of someone wearing a scuba tank. In 2013, a gallon of water leaked into one of their spacesuits in a matter of seconds. NASA doesn't really have a proper explanation for how on earth this could have happened. Commander Whitson making history with her record for any American. By the time she lands in September, her tally will be 666 days in space. With the Earth supposedly 23.4 degrees on its axis, and that leaves you, of course, the occultic number again 66.6 .6 degrees off. To look into it. Well, Earth is supposedly orbiting around the sun at 66,600 miles an hour. <laughs> That's so insane. You haven't looked into it. However, According to experts, these photographs are much less conclusive than one might think. Einstein told us that light actually is attracted by gravity. In other words, the path of light is not straight in a strong gravitational field. So uh, astronauts looking at the Earth uh, see a curved Earth. But what they don't realize is, is that it's not the Earth that's curved, it's the light taking a curved path from the Earth because of the strong gravitational field of the Earth, 
that makes the Earth look curved. Yeah. How come when you check the internet it's valid, but when I'm on the internet it's not? You're not talking about the internet, you're talking about a uh, guy's YouTube video. No, it's not a uh, guy's, there's a lot of guys, there's a lot of people. Okay. But they're just YouTube videos. It's huge. In October of 1929, Andrea again tried to focus the world's attention on the controversy by proving the notion the Earth spins to be absolute nonsense. It was reasoned that if a dirigible was to go aloft in England and hold itself perfectly static, then by the accepted theory the Earth should rotate underneath it and New York should come into view some four or five hours later. In fact, England was never lost from view. And this is from NASA's official website. This one page spot the station, of course referring to the so-called International Space Station, which of course does not exist. Take a look here. What do you see? As a form of mockery, they have the Flat Earth model on their website. A look here as well when it comes to the UN logo, which of course is basically the Flat Earth model. Through time-lapse photography, the velocity of these clouds has been dramatically increased. While they were actually drifting over the mountains at approximately 27 miles per hour, they now have the appearance of moving at well over 100, four times their normal speed. If the clouds were stationary and the Earth was revolving underneath them, this is how it would appear if the Earth was spinning at 100 miles per hour. Yet we're told that the Earth is spinning at 10 times that speed. The oh, science behind them is, is, is not it's verified big. by peer-reviewed journals. The science of the Earth the and gravity... The, the government science that's bought and paid for. What excuse do you have here? This is from ground level. As the guy with the camera pans back. You're going to see that boat and that buoy disappear right here. There you go gone out of sight, not around the so-called ball earth. It's all due to perspective, that simple. And that is, that's, in my opinion, is what the, uh, the globular earth theorists have done. They've just eliminated what they didn't know. The more honest approach is the flat earth approach, where you say, well, we don't know what's at the ends, but, but the ends are there.